So it's been a few years since I've talked to you guys about tripods, but today, let's talk about the tripods I actually use. That is a lot of freaking tripods, but these are the ones that I use every day. So let's just dive into this and I'll tell you all about them. So let's just start with this little turdlet. So this is the Obscura Bendy tripod, and it's 20 bucks, and it has a height of like 11 inches, and it's bendy, and it weighs like a pound. This is very similar to the Gobi. I know a lot of you guys like the Gobi. I don't. I don't like the way that it feels. This I can carry around with my GoPro and just kind of bend it around. It's very comfortable because of the silicone coating that's on the legs. That's what I really like about it. But the other thing too is just like the Gobi is you can mount this thing pretty much anywhere. If you want to bend this to a wall, you know, you pretty much can and then set your, your camera up like so. So it has that capability. That's why I like this thing. It pretty much stays in the camera bag at all times and we use it as the handle for the GoPro when we're shooting with it for a lot of videos or if I'm just doing my, my selfie stuff. It's just comfortable and it's light and it doesn't really hold much except for more than a GoPro. But what do you expect for 20 bucks? The next tripod, and this is a ProMaster monopod and these sell for about 129 bucks and they're in the neighborhood of about two pounds and it's it's good for travel and they have an excellent height and it actually goes a little bit higher than you see here uh, I primarily use these for video right now it's fully extended at 68 inches so if I slide this all the way down here we can come all the way down to here and it has a quick release clamp if you want to just take the foot off and have it as a rubber bumper if you don't want this little tripod on the bottom now this tripod actually has these little spring-loaded feet that go up like this. If you adjust the tension, and I believe it's on these Allen screws right here, you increase the tension that sits on this ball head. That way you can make it suit the weight of your lens. This isn't a super stable thing, but usually if you're filming like this high off the ground, and right now I have the A7R 3 with the Tamron 28 to 75 lens on here. This holds it fine. This I use for filming in the office or in tight spaces where you need to jam something into a corner where you have minimum area. Um, it just seems to work really well for that. And now let's check out the Zomi. It has a height of about 62 inches, somewhere around there. And it weighs about, I'd say two pounds, two and three quarter pounds, somewhere in that neighborhood. This one's all aluminum. And this is a four section tripod with an extending neck. It does actually come with a tripod head that's no longer on it because I didn't like the ball head. So this actually has a ProMaster ball head on it. But this one's great for travel. The reason why is it fits in your luggage. When you fold it down, it actually fits in a carry-on case. Uh, not really in a camera bag, but your regular carry-on case that you go somewhere with. So, and it's solid. And it also goes flat. This is just a cheap ass $60 tripod that you buy off of Amazon, aluminum legs. The funny thing about this is a lot of people always want a carbon fiber tripod. There's really no point until you get into professional level tripods. Carbon fiber tripods at 100 bucks are actually heavier than aluminum and they're not as rigid. They actually have a little bit more leg flex to it. And that's the problem with these is you get into the leg flex zone and when they're carbon fiber, they actually flex a little bit more like this. It's almost more like a golf shaft on a, on a golf club. So I try to avoid anything that's carbon fiber that's below like say 200 bucks because it's just not, not as light or as strong. This has a center column that drops down. And this is all twist lock in the middle. The head that comes on this thing is terrible. So I swapped this out with the ProMaster head. This was actually on the monopod that we just looked at originally, but I just found it much better on here. I love the quick release latches. They're fast. Uh, the other thing about this is it has a hook on the bottom here, a tension hook for your bag to keep this thing from moving around. With these little levers on the side, these allow you to extend the legs out, which is really nice. So you can actually fold it all the way over and use this upside down if you want to get the camera lens as close to the ground as possible. And what I'm talking about is 
like this. So you can film this way and then drop this all the way down. That's how you get to the lowest position on this. I think it's very rigid. I think it'll last a long time. Slick Sprint Pro, the original one. The new version is the Sprint Pro 2. I had a long history with this stupid tripod. I have lost this five times. I've left it on one plane. I left it out in the Tano National Forest only to find it a week later when I went back to shoot at the same spot, not realizing I had left it there. And uh, I lost the center column. I had to replace that at one point. But this stupid thing has been with me forever. The nice thing about this is it weighs approximately 2.2 pounds and it's great for hiking and it also fits in your camera bag, which is really pretty nice. They now sell a second version of this called the Sprint Pro 2 that has a quick release plate on the ball head on top of the tripod. It's been a good tripod. It isn't all that stable, but it's lasted me forever and I've used this thing everywhere. It's just stupid. Slick made these tripods. Back in the day, they were the most rigid light tripod you could get. Now there's a lot better stuff. And when I mean rigid, like look at this, like wiggle wiggle. So you can twist these legs pretty easy, fully extended 62 inches. You can buy the second generation of this that has a quick release tripod plate on the ball head for about 70 bucks. This weighs a whopping two pounds. The reason why I really like this thing, and I actually use this in the studio all the time for product photography, is when you bring the center cons um, column down, you tighten this up, and then you can unscrew half of this tube. And yes, you can unscrew it, but yes, I have lost it several times. Now, you can also flip this upside down and shoot bottom way that I just showed you with the Zomi. But with this, if you want to keep the camera straight up, you can remove this and then drop this down. And this is made of aluminum. It has this little ridge that you can see that's kind of stuck in here. This actually adds to the rigidity of the tripod itself. But it folds up so damn quick. It has these rubber feet that when you screw in will give you spikes. Just handy little, little features. And then of course we've got these little latches on the legs. So these latches can come out and this is at the three quarter and that's how low you can get. Now you can go even farther on the legs by pulling those latches again and go the full, the full flat. And so if you're doing product photography or macro work, this is really, really nice, very easy to use. The lower you get with this tripod, the more solid it gets. So when the legs are folded up, obviously this thing is super rigid. It's just been a great tripod, although in reality, it's kind of a piece of shit compared to everything else that's out there today. The Zomi is probably a better option, but this thing is so damn small and it just travels everywhere. So I still use it. I still like it. This is the Faisal CT3342 competition carbon fiber tripod. This is actually the most important tripod that I own. And the reason why I say that is this is it. the difference between a cheap tripod like the Slick Pro Trail Sprint, whatever the hell it was I just showed you, and the Zomi between this is those hold about four pounds. This holds 55. So that's the biggest difference. If you're going to put a serious camera on this thing, that's what you'd put on it. But this also has a serious price tag. So the way that it's outfitted right now with the um, NovoFlex Magic Ball head and the center column that's added to this and then the legs, you're talking 700 bucks. And they don't even make that ball head anymore that's on the top. It's been discontinued, but you can still find them. Uh, these legs are 400 bucks. The center co column that's in there is 50 bucks. But the most important thing about this is it's competition carbon fiber. Most tripods that you buy that are carbon fiber, they have flex to them. So they don't exactly have either, they're either not super sturdy or they're heavier than aluminum. This thing is ultralight coming in at, in this configuration without the camera, a blistering three pounds. 
uh, but it'll also hold large format cameras like 8x10s and 11x14s. I've had this for 10 years. I bought it immediately when it first came out. And at the time I was shooting large format film and I was looking for a tripod that could actually hold everything. And this thing holds some serious freaking weight. That's the difference between this tripod and something like this. Is this, this holds a blistering four and a half pounds. So you have to think about your lens, the camera body, how much that weighs. So you put a big Canon L lens on it, you're maxing out the weight of this tripod. So yeah, this, it's, it's decent for regular shit, but it's not as cool as this thing. This thing holds 55 pounds by itself, but these are extremely expensive. So this comes with just the legs and the legs are tournament carbon fiber. Flex wise, there's nothing. This thing weight wise, it weighs nothing. This is just kind of a cool head. It's not the most practical thing on the planet. This is made by Novoflex. They don't make these anymore. They're elegantly designed, which is why I like it, but they're not the most practical head. What they are is the lightest ball head that you can possibly put on a camera or on a tripod. Now this thing has a center column that comes all the way out. So again, you can do the same thing where if you need to get low, you just turn the camera upside down, lock it in, and then you can drop it all the way down. Uh, these types of tripods do require maintenance and it's really good to learn how to do it yourself. Uh, the owner of Faisal told me that these have a lifetime maintenance on them. So if the legs get sticky when they're sliding in because it's a twist lock, there's nylon compression sleeves in here that just need to be cleaned out. So you need to learn how to take it apart so you can clean it out. And they get gooked up because it's nylon. The legs, of course, fold all the way out and, of course, backwards. So you've got that full range of movement. So the folded height of the tripod itself is about 25 and a half inches. With the ball head, it's 28 and a half. So really portable, insanely light. But I have had this thing for 10 years and it's used almost every day. And it's still in mint condition and it doesn't look like it has hardly any mileage on it because it's made that well. And that's the difference between everything else and this is the quality of construction. The aluminum that they use on these plates are uh, aircraft grade aluminum. It's not cast, uh, it's true milled aircraft grade stuff. So that's the reason why I use it. It's built like a brick. So there you go. Now let's check out the big Faisal. Now this behemoth, this is the world's tallest tripod that you can currently buy. And this thing is sick. 108 inches. And this one actually has a uh, motorized uh, pan head on it. Uh, it's just an Adorama head. I'll have a link to that in the description. Um, very handy. It's controlled by a cable remote because you cannot reach that camera at 108 inches off the ground. That's pretty damn high. And just to give you an idea of how high this thing actually is, well, here you go. This is me acting like an idiot. This thing holds 66 pounds. And it actually holds a lot more than that. <laughs> you don't do that with any tripod. <laughs> Now I weigh 166 pounds. So that is a lot of weight that this thing can actually hold. This, like the other tripod, is sold with just the legs and then it has a flat plate that comes with it and then you have to buy the center column separately, which again you can see is carbon fiber. And uh, the center column is 60 bucks, an additional 60 bucks. And then for this, I put on the, uh, uh, what the hell is this thing? The Geodos MH7001 ball head. This holds 13 pounds. This thing holds 66. This holds 66. And then this stupid little motorized head up here only holds about six pounds. When I work with this thing, typically I try to get my plate level and I'm gonna use this motorized head with the camera. And then basically you have to extend the center column first and that just locks with the twist lock. And then you have to extend the legs 
And this is where it takes a little bit of work to get these things all the way up. And I mean all the way up. And there you have it. And then I use the app, the Sony app on my phone, to control the camera. And then you can see I actually have to use this remote to control the head. So basically, I'm using my phone app along with a wireless remote to control the camera, which is now way up there. So a lot of times they use different photos for different things and they like to get some cars in the shot. So if you take it from the parking lot, this allows me to get high enough to still get my client's store in the shot. So I just gotta get one more angle and then I'm done. So there you go. That is the Faisal Gigantimo tripod. Thing is freaking amazing. This is hands down one of the best investments I ever made. But again, this whole setup, when it's all built up, you're talking almost 800 bucks, 900 bucks. That's out of a lot of people's budget, but it depends on what you're doing. If you need to plant a camera 12 feet off the ground and be able to control it remotely, this is the tripod for you. Now, this one is also made out of competition carbon fiber uh, with a heavier carbon fiber over that. And again, aircraft grade quality aluminum on top of that. These tripods have serial numbers, just to give you an idea. That's when you know you're getting serious. Once a tripod has its own serial number, yeah. Well, I hope you've learned something today because I certainly haven't. All I learned was that, well, I actually had to add up how much I spent on all this shit and that's a lot of fucking money over a very long period of time but it's worth every single penny. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, and subscribe to my channel for more information like this. And don't pay attention to those screaming kids in the background. They're not being tortured. That's just a playground.